Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I've got a speed reviews. We're going to share the hits and misses out of the products I've been testing out recently. This is mostly going to be a Sephora sale haul follow-up because many of these products are products that I shared in my Sephora haul a couple weeks ago. If you missed that, I'll leave it linked down below. But I'll also be reviewing some new Nabla products, the newest launch from Persona Cosmetics. I'll also be giving my thoughts on the newest concealer formula from e.l.f. These just came out. Plus, like I said, those products from my haul, which were mostly Charlotte Tilbury, I'll let you know whether or not they are worth that pricey price tag. That pricey price tag? Whether or not they're worth the price. So if you're new to my channel, I upload Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I would love for you to subscribe, but let's go ahead now and hop into it. So I actually want to start off with these e.l.f. concealers because I'm still testing these out, but I wanted to give you guys my first thoughts after using them twice. So I don't call, like this is not a full review, but everything else in the video I have tested very thoroughly but these I just picked up and they just came in the mail and since they're new and I know so many of you guys were interested in them I thought I'd share you guys share with you guys my first thoughts now instead of waiting a couple weeks or actually probably a month to include them in my next speed reviews so these retail for five dollars a piece I did pick up two shades just because I was ordering online and I wasn't sure which shade would be best for me so I got light 26 n and fair 15 w so these are supposed to be a pretty light coverage concealer and i would say if you apply a pretty small thin amount of these it's very light coverage which i kind of like so my purpose for buying these was not necessarily to be my concealer that covers up dark circles or covers up any spots on the face i was purchasing these because i wanted to use them kind of as like highlighting sticks i mean there's no shimmer in them they're matte but to kind of lift different areas of the face i've been watching a ton of tutorials from hindash recently and that's a technique that he uses a lot to use a lighter color product to highlight different portions of the face so that's part of the reason I was really into these. If you follow me on TikTok, I posted a little video comparing the coverage of this to their popular camo concealer. I have the hydrating camo. I also had the original camo, but decluttered it because it was too dry for me. And I'll show you guys some close-ups on camera as well so you guys can see the comparison. If you're kind of wondering where these sit, the coverage of this is much lighter than camo and it's also a lot thinner of a product. These dry down pretty quickly, so I've noticed that if I kind of draw lines all over my face, I struggle to blend it out. I think it's better to work in one area and blend it in. They also dry down decently matte. I wouldn't say they look necessarily drying, but they are self-setting. I don't think you need to powder them. I'm wearing these today. I mostly have on the shade Light 26N, but I lightened up a little bit with the, the Fair shade. So I have this on my under eyes. I also, the main reason I wanted this was to kind of clean up under the contour area. I think it's nice to have a little concealer to clean this up, but when you're using a full coverage concealer to do that, sometimes it can look heavy. So I like that these are light coverage and really thin. So I used it there. I have a little down the center of my nose and a little bit on my forehead. So far, I'm really liking these. If my thoughts on these do change, I will of course update you guys in the future, but so far I'm pretty happy to have picked these up. I will say though, like I said, I used it here. I used a regular concealer first. I'm not really reaching for these for that coverage, at least not for a look like today where I'm a little more full glam. For every day, absolutely, but not for a look like this. My absolute favorite product from that Sephora haul, you will see this in my November, is that what month we're in? November favorites. This is from Urban Decay. I picked up another one of their Moon Dust shadows and I picked up the shade Space Cowboy. So this, I feel like adds so much to my collection. I have used this in almost every eyeshadow look I've done recently. So the base to this is transparent. It's not going to add any color to the lid, it's just glitter. So because of that, it looks so cool on top of any shadow. Like it makes any look so much cooler. I've used it on its own when I have like a no makeup makeup day and I just want a little something on the lid and that kind of makes your lid almost look like wet because these are so reflective. A lot of you guys told me that the ColourPop has a dupe for this. I'm going to try to remember the name of it. I'll pop it on the screen. I've got to go look it up, but some of you guys told me ColourPop has a dupe. 
I, when I looked for it on their website, I don't think it was in stock because, you know, nothing's ever in stock on ColourPop. But if you wanted a similar effect, that might be a nice route to go because this is pretty pricey. This is $22 for the one single shadow. But for me, I don't regret it at all. I think it was a great, a well-spent $22 because, like I said, I've worn it in almost every look. I have it on today. Ooh, but what I wanted to mention, if you have this... I feel like you have a similar shade. So this is the mini retro from Natasha Denona. And this shade at the end right here, it looks pink in the pan, but again, it's a similar concept where it's kind of like one of those topper shades. It doesn't have a base, it's just glitter. And I feel like they give a similar effect. Today, I'm wearing both as the glitter on my lid. I started with this and then intensified it with this. The colors in this are a little bit different. Like these glitters have like pinky purple colors to them, whereas this is a little more neutral and just like silvery gold looking. But if you already had this, you do have a similar shadow. Or if you were like, hey, I don't wanna spend $22 on that one shadow, this is 25 and you get four more shades, so could be another route to go if you want that topper effect. So I tried making a cereal milk latte today. One of my favorite coffee shops, it actually closed down during the pandemic, unfortunately, but they used to sell a coffee, wait, cereal milk latte. So I saved all of the sugar that's at the bottom of the cereal bag and dumped it in when I was making my coffee this morning. And I feel like it gives a similar effect. Oh, I forgot to say in the beginning, whenever I do these reviews, I like to split the products up into my great products, the just okay products, and then the duds. So I didn't want to categorize the e.l.f. ones just yet because like I said, I'm still testing them, but I wanted to share first thoughts. The Urban Decay one, of course, is a favorite, but surprisingly and impressingly, impressingly, in today's video, we don't have any duds. So there's not a single thing in this video that I think is bad and I wouldn't recommend, but I will still categorize them between which ones I think are amazing and I highly recommend and which ones I think are just okay and maybe I would recommend depending on your preference. So let's get into the next great product. You guys could probably guess. I did mention this in a products that have been replaced video. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. I picked up a mini of the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. So just for some, a bit of an idea here, this is my hand. I do have small hands, but the palette is even smaller than my hand. And let me also compare it to the Natasha Denona mini palettes, even smaller. But from what I can tell, it seems like this will last me a decent amount of time. Like I was kind of expecting the pans to be even smaller when I got it. And I was like, okay, this isn't even that many, especially for $29. I think this was worth the money. The contour shade is fantastic. I love it. I would say if you're around my skin tone, this is an amazing contour. They do have a darker version of this palette as well. What I like about this, it's not fully matte, so it doesn't look like dry or powdery on the skin. It kind of is, I don't want to say that they're shimmering because there's definitely not, but it has a bit of a glow to it. And when you guys see close-up swatches, you'll notice that it's so subtle. Like even when I swatch it out on the hand, you almost can't see it, but that's the reason I love it as a contour because it's so easy to use. You're not gonna get too much. It's undetectable. It just gives that natural shadow. The highlight though is such a beautiful like lit from within highlight. And I kind of thought it was going to be very subtle and I wasn't gonna be able to build it up, but you can actually get a decently bold highlighter out of it. Definitely not on the level of like an Ofra highlight or the ABH Glow Kits, but I do think that it's a really beautiful everyday highlighter and it is easy to manipulate if you want something a little more subtle or you want to intensify it. So these two absolute favorite purchases from that Sephora haul. So glad I picked them up. Definitely worth the money for me. Last product in the fantastic category or the greats from the video. This is from Nabla. This is their newest palette. This is the side-by-side -side nudes palette. So they did send this to me and it's funny. I even mentioned in a will I buy it video that I probably would have passed on this if it wasn't sent to me, but I've been surprised at how much I've been reaching for this, how much I've been loving it, and I've really loved every single look that I've created with it. So there is one shade in this palette that I haven't used yet, and that is this shade right here, Paradiso, and I just, I don't know, I'm never drawn to these like orangey gold shades, and every time I get ready, I'm like, you need to use that shade today to test it out. 
And that was my plan for today. And instead I went with this purple and blue look from a different palette, of course. But you know what this reminds me of? I feel like this palette is the Anastasia Soft Glam palette on the top with a little bit of Sultry on the bottom, like Sultry from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I mean, I don't think the bottom goes as cool toned and silvery with as many options as Sultry, but I've created some looks with this that are very Sultry-esque. The look that I was wearing, I believe it was in the video that went up yesterday, I used this shade, this shade, and this shade for that silvery look. I did film a tutorial for that. It is up on my Instagram if you want to see this palette in action. These two shades, this shade Body and Soul and this shade Better Society, they're kind of like pressed glitters. So they are... I recommend using them with your finger and they're like really smushy, almost a little bit messy, but they give such an intense look on the eyes. And then most of the other shimmers in here are very smooth, but those ones in particular are kind of chunky, but I'm, that's on purpose. It's supposed to give that thicker glittery look. And I like that there's a lot of different formulas within here. I think this is just a great nude palette for every day. The only thing that I would change about it, and this might not be for everyone, but based on my personal preference, if I would just swap out this gold, like I said, it's not my personal favorite. If this was more of a true gold that's less of a yellow base or even like a champagne tone, those are what I love to wear on the lid for every day. So if this palette had that, it would probably be my perfect neutral palette. But I love the variety. I mean, it is a bigger palette, but I feel like for someone, if you're gonna buy just like one neutral palette to use every day, this has a lot of options that you could go with. Now we're moving on to the OK products. I don't think any of these are duds. I would still recommend all these, but they're not ones that are like standouts in my collection that I highly recommend, think everyone needs to run out and grab. But based on the way that I describe them in this review, they might be for you, they might not be. Like these are pretty OK, but they didn't knock my socks off. So let's start with these wands. I really do enjoy these, but I'm not as obsessed with them as I thought I would be based on my love for the blush wand that I picked up. So these are from Charlotte Tilbury. This is called the Contour Wand, and this is the Beauty Light Wand. I am wearing both of these today. This is the only highlighter that I have on my cheeks, and this actually is the only, I didn't apply bronzer now that I'm thinking about it. I just did this and then a little bit of blush. And then obviously this. Okay, both of these, very, very easy to use. If you struggle to blend out cream contour, this is so easy. And it's interesting because the color of it kind of intimidates me. It looks a little bit darker than what I would think I would want to use for a contour, but it just blends out seamlessly. And even when I swatched it for the first time, I thought, okay, maybe this isn't the right tone that I'm looking for. I don't know if it's gonna give me the shadow effect that I'm going for. It kind of looks like a liquid bronzer, but it actually looks like a very natural shadow. The highlighter wand, again, very beautiful. I think these are super easy to work with, especially for beginners. Like it's pretty hard to mess them up, but what I've found with the highlighter especially, some liquid highlighters are a bit more forgiving in terms of which step in the routine you apply them. Like I have some where I can apply it over a powder and it's not going to mess anything up. This formula, definitely make sure that you apply this before any of your powders because I've had days where I forget and do some like powder blush and powder the face and then try to apply this on top and tap it out and it ends up picking up what's underneath it, moving it around. And I had this happen one day and I felt like I had a little stripe where all the product underneath was missing. So I think the highlighter especially works best with other creams and liquids. If you're going to use powders with it, do it after the fact. Also though, I have not used this for very long and I feel like kind of like the blush one, it does look like I've used a lot. And I've heard mixed things from subscribers. I've had a few people tell me that it's deceiving and there's way more in it than it looks like based on how it looks after a few uses, but I've also had other subscribers say that they went through it so quickly and it wasn't worth the money for them. So I'm gonna have to get back to you guys on that. I mean, these are $39 a piece. And with the blush one, I was like, wow, $39 well spent. With these, I'm like, mm, they're good, I enjoy them. I don't know about $39 though. I get it though, it's a luxury brand. You're kind of paying for the aesthetic. I mean, they're easy to use, I like them, I like them. 
but I'm not as obsessed with them as I am the blush. Would still recommend them though. I think they're easy to use. Also okay are the nail polishes from Persona. I wanted to love these even more than I do. I was like so excited when I saw Persona was coming out with nail polishes because they are one of my all-time favorite brands and I love nail polish so much. But these... I don't think they're anything special, but I also don't think that they're bad nail polishes. So they sent me six shades, no, four shades. There are six shades in total. This red is called Sherry. I will pop a photo up if I still have it of me wearing this shade. And they have this lighter purple called Lilac, this like nudie brown called Taupe. I have this color on my toes right now. And then this color is called Blush, and you saw me wearing this on my nails in a few recent videos. So I have used all four colors by now. What I'm really curious to see is if they come out with some other colors in the future, I kind of think my opinion might change and I might think they're even better. But what I've found, I really like nail polish. I've tried a lot of formulas. I always do my own nails and I feel like I have a good understanding of what nail polishes are good and bad. And these three, I would say they're on par for this type of color because usually these very like milky shades are harder to formulate and they require a solid three coats to get full opacity. So I don't want to say that's necessarily a bad thing about these polishes because I think that's just kind of on par with other lighter milky tones like this. But just know, I would say for any of the light colors, absolutely two coats minimum, but you're gonna get best results with three. But personally, when I'm doing my nails, I prefer a polish that I can get a nice result with two coats because that's when it's the least messy. I feel like when I'm layering on three, that's when it starts to get a little bit difficult. So I don't know, that's why I'm saying, I'm like, I wonder if they would come out with like a true blue one day. And cause those are the shades that I'm like, you can usually get away with one to two coats. So maybe my opinion would change. Love this red shade. This one I think I did two coats with. I think I had pretty good opacity at one coat, but I just like to do two to keep everything even. I would say these are right on par with a lot of your standard nail polishes. Like when I used to purchase from SC and OPI, I think I would compare these very much to those formulas, but I don't like them as much as I like my NCLA nail polishes, which I think are the best, but those are also $16 and these are only 10. I don't think they're as good as KL Polish, which is now Lights Lacquer, but for a $10 nail polish, I think they are right on par with a lot of their competitors like OPI or SC or Sally Hansen, which none of those are cruelty free and this is. Final products, Nabla came out with some lip liners. I have been testing out two of the shades. There are six in total. So depending on your skin tone and the effect that you like for your lips, I feel like there's a shade for everyone. Today I'm wearing both of these. This is two and three. And I have those plus a very light lipstick on the inner portion of the lips if you're curious. It is e.l.f. Cream. This is one of their $3 Searsy Satin lipsticks. They're amazing. So I'm not always a fan of pencil liners, but I think these ones are very creamy for being pencil liners. But it's not a wooden pencil. That's probably why. It's kind of more like a coal. Super creamy, almost on the verge of being too creamy where I don't get as defined of lines. I mean, like on the verge, like I do, but they're, they're extremely creamy. Good wear time out of them. I do think they selected really beautiful colors that work for a range of people, especially if you like that contoured lip look with like a darker lip line. I think they did a good job selecting the shades. I think the formula is fine, but that's kind of why they're in the just okay category. They didn't change my life, but they're definitely not bad lip liners. Going back to the e.l.f. ones for a second, that's another thing I did today I forgot to mention. After I did my lip lines, sometimes I like to clean it up a little bit with some concealer, but sometimes that can look heavy if it's a thicker concealer. So I just took this, hardly any on the brush, and kind of just went around my lips in a circle. But because this is lighter coverage, there's really not a noticeable line where I did that. I just kind of tapped it in with my finger and it cleaned everything up really well. So these, great for brightening, great for cleaning up different areas of the face. Also, if you had some shadow come outside of the line where you want. You could just do a little line with this, tap it in. Kind of a cool product, lots of uses. Those were my thoughts on some products I have recently been testing out. If you guys have tried any of these, let me hear your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.